Every home labber and IT person has their go-to set of tools and accessories to help them accomplish tasks. This ranges from the very specialized to the common. What do you do when you don't have the right tool on hand? You compromise. I made the embarrassing mistake of trying to open my play button plaque with what I had on hand, which was a Phillips screwdriver. I probably could have done a better job with the spoon. In this moment, it got me thinking about some of the tools and accessories that I use in my home lab projects. I do all kinds of projects at home, from building server racks, to building mini and full-size PCs, to upgrading and troubleshooting hardware, to home office upgrades, to installing wireless access points and cameras, and down to Raspberry Pi projects. And most of these jobs require different tools. But I've gathered up some of the most essential tools and accessories that I use for most of my projects. They range from networking tools, to power cables and testers, to brackets, to extra screws, to hard drive testing, to thermometers, traditional tools, and even something as odd as a headlamp. Yes, a headlamp. And if you don't see something on my list, be sure to let me know in the comments below. But first, a huge shout out to Micro Center for making today's video possible. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs and hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. Micro Center is your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and knowledgeable staff that are there to help you out and will point you in the right direction. Also, Micro Center has been generous enough to give a free SSD to all new customers and is available in store only. So be sure to see the description in the details. First, we're going to start with a networking category. Now, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I love these really slim Cat6 cables. These things are super nice, super slim, super high quality, even have snag protection and they're iridescent. So they actually give off a really good light when they are connected to a network switch. But really they feel premium without all of the bulk. But what do you do if you want something a little bit longer and a little more durable? Well, I usually go for these. These are Cat6 cables by Cable Matters and they're pretty durable. Um, I use these typically to run throughout my rack or sometimes even in the wall but for really short runs. But these are great. They are snagless, they're durable, and they do the job. And they're pretty affordable too. So I always keep a couple of these and a couple of these on hand because you never know when you need them. And when I say a couple, <laughs> I mean a lot. <laughs> I overbought. So what do you do if you want to run your own cables and crimp them or punch them down yourself? Well, I've punched down my fair share <laughs> of cables over the years. And I even have some keystones here. Now, these are couplers actually, but I have keystones too, where I can actually crimp or punch down raw ethernet cable into one of these jacks. But it's good to have these around in case you need to actually crimp some down and make some yourself. And that too takes something specialized, like this crimper. I've had this crimper for about 10 years and it's held up. <laughs> I know this probably isn't the most high quality one, but it has held out for many, many years. And this crimper can crimp both 8P and 6P. I don't know what those are. I assume RJ45 and RJ23, maybe? I'm not a networking person, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but super nice. You can crimp them down, crimp them in there, and then on top of that, and it has a cutter right there too. So these don't get as much use as they used to, but definitely nice to have around, uh, especially if you need to crimp something down or if you have a friend who wants to borrow one, it's always nice to say, hey, I've got a crimper, don't need to buy one. Now, something that's nice to have too is a punch down tool. Now, I couldn't find my punch down tool last night, so I think I need to pick up another, but they're pretty inexpensive. And again, those are nice to have around if you plan on doing any kind of cabling in the future. I used it to punch down all of my cables to my punch down block that's in my server room. And again, that's one of those tools that it's nice to have if you have a friend or a buddy who actually needs one, you can lend it to them. You need to pick one up or borrow one from someone. So while we're going down this path of actually creating cables, there's something that I, honestly can't live without either, 
and that's this network tester by Klein. But I needed just a simple tester when I was running all of my ethernet cable in my home. And so this is what I picked up. It's actually pretty cool. So all you need to do to actually test cable is pull off this end, plug it into here, turn this on, do it again for a backlight. Once we plug it in and we test, we can see that this cable is passing. Now, if this wasn't passing, we would get some error codes here, but we can see that this is all passing. And it actually shows you how these pairs line up too, but pretty cool. And you can actually attach this to a toner too, to be able to trace your network cables in your home. So super nice, especially if you're gonna be creating cables often. Next, you wanna plug that into something. And something that I keep on my workbench all the time is this TP-Link 8 port gigabit desktop switch. Now it has some padding on here because I had it mounted on the wall for a while, but this switch is fantastic. Now it's unmanaged, but it's pretty affordable. But the nice part about this one specifically is, is that it actually has four PoE ports. So if you're testing something like a Raspberry Pi or an access point or a camera and it needs power, you can plug it into here and give it power and network. Now you can use this full time, but this is super nice to keep on your workbench so you don't have to do that over and over and over. <laughs> So I've had this for years, great value, nice little switch here for your desktop or really for anywhere. So next up are a handful of things that I use for my electrical projects. Now I use the term electrical projects lightly because I'm not an electrician and I do very little electrical work. Turn it on, it works and you get shocked sometimes. Just kidding, not really, but kidding. <laughs> so one of my greatest finds lately are these simple extension cords. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck are you gonna do with an eight inch extension cord? <laughs> a lot, actually. These extension cords are great to plug into a surge protector and then plug a power adapter in. So why, why even use it? Well, well, here's an example of something that I do. I plug this into a surge protector and then I can plug this wall wart into here without it taking up multiple spaces. And I discovered these and they're pretty affordable and I bought <laughs> quite a bit. And I actually have quite a bit throughout the house, under my desk, and actually in my server rack too. It's great to plug in things uh, to my UPS. I plug things into my UPS that don't have a typical three prong adapter. They're one of these wall wards. And then I can take advantage of all of the power outlets on that device. So super nice. And next up is a surge protector in my server room. Now I have two of these, they're super nice. You can wall mount them, they're metal, they're pretty industrial. They have a nine foot power cord and you can plug in up to 12 things into it. And these are great for home office, a workbench, or even a workshop or a LAN party if you want. Highly recommend them, affordable and durable. And last but not least is something that I keep in hand so I don't get electrocuted. <laughs> but this little device right here is fantastic. So when I was wiring up my server room, this came in handy. So this is actually a fluke device and it's a voltage alert. So if you put this next to something that's actually live and carrying a current, you'll see it light up and you'll see it beep like that. And you can plug this into outlets or you can touch it against wires and <laughs> all the normal things you would usually do, but pretty cheap, pretty affordable. And it was super handy when I was wiring up my server room. I should have bought this a long time ago. Now it's time to look at some more general purpose tools that I use when working in my home lab. Now, first up is something that I should have used when opening up my play button. And that's this simple utility knife with a retractable blade. It's pretty basic. It's just a DeWalt with handle grip and a razor blade. <laughs> I just wanted to show you this to prove to you that I actually had a tool to open up that box properly. But I love this tool, use it all the time. Open boxes, use it for all sorts of things. I promise, I have one. And I didn't just buy this either. You can see this has been used before. <laughs> then there's something as simple as a screwdriver. <laughs> You're probably wondering like, whoa, a screwdriver, that's nice. Well, actually this screwdriver is super nice. It's the one screwdriver that I need to grab because it has interchangeable heads and they all fit into the handle themselves. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different tools. So this is super nice and I have other screwdrivers, but this is the one that I go and grab because I know that I'll have the appropriate head for it. Next up is this. Now, if you, well, you can see it right there, but I was gonna say, if you see this case, you probably know what this is. And this is my Dremel set. Now I don't get to use this as much as I'd like to, but it actually comes in handy 
for very specialized applications. Like for instance, well, this is kind of dirty. For instance, I had to modify my R710 to allow a video card to fit in it properly. And so I use this Dremel with the appropriate tip, file down the back of the PCI Express slot, and then I could plug in a 16X PCI Express card, my video card. Worked out pretty nice, and without this, I don't think it would have been possible. I'd love to have more projects to use this, but again, this is a nice tool to have on hand for very specialized things that you need to do. And it's another tool that's great to have if a friend needs to borrow it. Start keeping tabs on that friend that needs to borrow all this stuff. Maybe you'll need something in return one day. That's not how it works. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, every now and then I need to check the temperature of something, whether that be a CPU, a heatsink, some hard drives, or just an open flame. <laughs> Up until I had this device, it was kind of hard to do. And it's this digital thermometer. Now it's an infrared thermometer. You point it at something and it will tell you the temperature of the thing you're pointing it at. You can see this mat right here is 78 degrees. If I point it at my Intel NUC that you can't see, it's about 88 degrees right there. If I point it at myself, well, not totally accurate, but 92 degrees. Oh, it might be accurate on the surface of my skin, but this is super handy to measure temperature. It's super fun. It's a nice party trick too, <laughs> to point it at things and figure out the temperature of things. It's pretty awesome and relatively affordable too. Let's see what the temperature is of the camera. 79. The sensor back here is 106. Yeah, this camera is getting pretty warm. Last but not least is something you wouldn't typically think of when you think of working on IT projects or home lab projects in general, and that's a headlamp. <laughs> yes, a headlamp. Hear me out. Headlamps actually let you work hands-free if you're working on something and you need some light too. Now, I've used this for camping, for crawling in the attic, and I've even used it while working on PCs. Sometimes it's super hard to get behind the server with enough light to see what I'm working on, so I pop on this headlamp. Highly recommend it, and they're also great if you lose power or go camping. And next is a whole host of things that you should always have on hand if you're working on servers or PCs or anything in your home lab. It's things like Velcro. Velcro is super nice because it's not permanent and you can cut it to the size you want. Great for managing cables. But if you want something a little more permanent, then it's zip ties. Zip ties are super handy when you're trying to bind up cables or working inside of a case or a server case, and you want to do something that's a little more permanent, especially for wiring. Super nice. I have white and I have black ones too. I've accessorized my zip ties. Then there's cage nuts. Now, nothing is worse when you're working on your rack and you run out of cage nuts. I know it's happened to me twice. But cage nuts are nice to have around in case that server accidentally follows you home and falls into your home lab. <laughs> now I have both chrome or nickel plated and black ones. Really, it's up to you. Now there's another screw that I always run out of, so I keep some on hand. It's not the bajillion amount of screws you get every time you buy a motherboard or buy a server. It's actually these hard drive screws right here. I feel like I never have these screws right here and they're the screws that you actually use to screw into the side of your hard drive. And I've used these a lot when I'm replacing spinning drives with SSDs and I also use a mounting bracket. And sometimes when you buy those brackets, it doesn't come with these screws. So these are super cheap and nice to have on hand. And I feel like motherboards never ship these screws with them, or at least not enough. I mentioned hard drive brackets, super nice to have around when you're swapping out spinning disk or 3.5 to smaller SSDs. Use quite a bit of them. The last two things that I always have on hand are generally for troubleshooting. First is a USB drive. I have this USB drive that has all of my ISOs on it. So anytime I need to troubleshoot or boot from an ISO or update firmware, I can put them on here with something like Ventoy and have all of my ISOs and images on here. So I just need one. So this is really one of the last ones that I need. And last but not least is this hard drive adapter. Now this thing's a little bit older, but I've used it probably a hundred times in my life. So anytime I have a problem with a hard drive or need to wipe a hard drive, I just pull out this, connect it to power, and then I can plug it directly in until I'm 
not great at putting stuff back. So I can plug this in to one of my hard drives and then I can plug this in to my PC or something else and then I can wipe or format this hard drive or do anything I want to it. And I don't need to rip open a machine and put this in just to do that. This is super nice. Comes with a power adapter too that I have on my workbench downstairs. Plug into there and then I can power this on and plug it in via USB. The nice thing is it has support for parallel ATA, PATA, I'm <laughs> the old type of IDE pins <laughs> that you have right here. In case you have some older drives, you need to wipe too. So this is super nice. I've had it for a long time. I have it in my workbench and I always have it just in case I need to get data off or I need to wipe this drive. Fantastic. So did I miss something? Is there something you use that I should have added to my list? Let me know in the comments section below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, shiny tech thing. So what hardware are you going to buy next? Yeah, good question. Um, I got some hardware coming. I think the one that I'm 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 excited about, there's a lot of things that I'm excited about, but the next thing that is coming for sure is a rack. I've been on this journey trying to figure out like, what is my next server rack going to be? 